Good morning, my friend. Today, I want to share with you how to have the best life according to the Gospel of Mark. Now, that sounds like an exaggeration, but hear me out, okay? Is the path to your best life to follow your heart? Is it to do what makes you happy? Now, what is it? Now, to answer this question, the Gospel of Mark contrasted two models, Jesus and Peter. Now, are you ready? With Jesus, his response to life, especially trials, was self-denial. Self-denial without any concern for self-preservation. Now, this has been his approach since birth. Now, let's jump to a period in his life where he is facing all the leaders who want him dead. Mark 14, 53 says, And they led Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests and all the elders and all the scribes came together. Now, the word all highlights Jesus being surrounded by all his enemies. And he is utterly alone. If you follow Jesus, there will be times when you will be alone. For example, you might be the only Christian at your school or at work. I remember when I was young and, and one of the only few followers of Jesus at school. I was tempted to hide I was a follower of Jesus. For example, I pretended to drop something on the ground to hide that I was praying for my lunch. Now, what do you do to hide that you are a believer? But how did Jesus respond? He was faithful and truthful despite the risk of death. The religious and legal leaders put Jesus on trial not to find the truth, but with a predetermined goal to kill him. Mark 14, 55 to 56 says, Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to, look at that, to put him to death. But the text says, they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Despite the accusations being false, the judge, the jury, and the witnesses are biased. They are out to destroy Jesus. Have you been a victim of false accusations? Did people, including fellow Christians, lie against you? It's one of the most painful experiences you could go through. And I won't blame you if you are tempted to be angry, to retaliate, to hate. But it's not the path Jesus took. Now, what's the false accusation against Jesus? Mark 14, 57 to 58 says, And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And in three days, I will build another not made with hands. Uh, you know, Jesus indeed said this, but the temple he is referring to is not the Jewish temple, but his own body. So he was accused falsely. Now, after being silent to two sets of accusations, Jesus, in the third round, finally answered when the high priest asked him if he was the Messiah. Mark 14, 61 and 62 says, Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. Wow! No hesitation, no holding back. Without faltering, he acknowledged that he was both God and Messiah without regard for his safety. Of course, this resulted in him losing his life. But, but the paradox is, he gained back his life and an exalted life at that. Not only that, he gave life to many. You see, Jesus is showing us what it means to follow God. Self 
self-denial, not self-preservation. Self-denial, not preservation. My friend, not only did Jesus die because He loves you, but He's showing you how to truly live. Now see, for example, Mark 10, 29 to 30. Jesus said, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left or deny house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or land for my sake, for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. In short, it's not following your heart, but following God's heart. It's not following your dreams, but God's dream. Now, how about Peter? Now, this leads us to the second point. Peter too was on trial. His response? His only concern was self-preservation. Self-preservation. That's why he was untruthful and unfaithful. Now let's go back to the story of when Jesus was arrested. Mark 14, 54 says, And Peter had followed him. Wow! He was a follower of Jesus. But, but, he followed him at a distance. That's incomplete. He only followed Jesus as far as the text says, the courtyard of the high priest. That's it. No further. He is unwilling to share the sufferings of his master. Now, back in Mark 3.14, Jesus appointed 12, whom he also named apostles, so that they might look at the text, they might be with him. With him. But here in our passage, he was with the guards, not with him, but with the guards and warming himself at the fire. He prefers his comfort rather than his calling. Self-denial is not on his agenda. If God calls you to do something, which won't be pleasant at the beginning, but ultimately ends for your good and for God's glory, how ready are you to leave the warmth of your comfort zone. Now, going back to the story, while Jesus was truthful and faithful against many accusers, Peter cannot even be truthful and faithful against one solitary accuser. Mark 14, 66 to 68 says, And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls, now only one, only one servant girl of the high priest came and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. Did you notice the contrast? Jesus stood strong before a slew of gangsters. But Peter shook like a leaf before a lone servant girl. Now, why was Peter unfaithful and deceitful because he wants to avoid risk and danger, a sign that he does not want to deny himself. My friend, sin makes us treasure comfort, whereas faith makes us thirst for Christ. Now, which will you choose? Your own heart and dreams or the beauty of Christ? Now, it's also interesting to note that the servant girl guessed correctly what Peter was supposed to be doing when she said, you also were with the Nazarene Jesus. Now, to be with Jesus is part of the calling of the 12 disciples. My friend, a big part of your calling is to be with Jesus. If you don't spend time with Jesus daily, sin will reassert its control on you. You will soon notice a progressive deterioration of yourself. Like Peter, you start with a small lie. And if you don't check it, 
like Peter, it leads to more severe and more shocking actions that you yourself cannot imagine you could do. So don't neglect your time with Jesus and your quiet time and your Bible reading and your prayer. Now, notice the comparison between Jesus' responses and Peter's when both were accused three times. Now, in the first accusation, Jesus' response was silence. In the second, still silence. No attempt to rationalize or escape. And the third, he explicitly and truthfully said, I am the Messiah. On the other hand, Peter's response to the first accusation starts with a simple denial when he begins to drift away from Jesus. Now, on the second accusation, his denial progressed to repeated and continuous lying as highlighted by the imperfect tense of the verb from the previous aorist tense. In short, from a single lie to repeated lies. But on the third accusation, not only did he deny he was a disciple of Jesus, but he also added cursing and swearing. Mark 14, 70 to 71 says, And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Jesus, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. <laughs> but he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. Did you notice how quickly he spiraled downward when he stopped being with Jesus? My friend, without Jesus, your life will also spiral downward. Why? Because only Jesus can break the power of sin, the power that's causing the downward spiral in your life and He will give you victory over any sin, such as, you know, fear, lying, addiction, anger, pornography, etc., etc. That's why Jesus died on the cross, because only His death can break the power of sin. Will you choose Jesus more than your life? If you do, you know what? You will gain real life, abundant life, now write yes in the comment section below if you say yes to Jesus. Do it. Do it, my friend. Now, if you are already a Christian, but you are following Jesus from afar, like Peter, repent. That's what Peter did. And just as there is hope for Peter's backsliding, there's hope for you. Mark 14, 72 continued, and immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. In short, he repented. And when Jesus restored him, he stayed close to Jesus through the Holy Spirit from then on. And the book of Acts recorded Peter's amazing life after that as he helped change the course of the world's history. How? By not following his own heart and dreams anymore, but that of God's heart and dreams. Self-denial, not self-preservation. Would you try God's path? to the best life.